Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum Assalamu alaikum We're sending our ziyarat to each and everyone We congratulate you for this best gathering in which we share together We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us the opportunity to be present. Allah in His decree inside the living room of Sayyidi Muhammad al-Amin Bara we celebrated our first Mawlidun Nabi on Monday 10th, 2006. We had a total of 20 chairs and they weren't filled. Hence, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to have a conference in this year of 2022 with a full audience. We renew our ziyara towards the master Sayyidi Ahmed, who is the Prophet Wasallam. We opened in his blessings during the first celebration. However, until now, we are still operating with his blessings and we will never stop doing so. 
because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said if you're looking for mercy emanating from me you must emulate the Prophet in his manners as وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكِ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالِمِينَ Meaning, Allah sent the Prophet to us as a mercy for humanity. For that humanity as a whole should thank him for it. We send him our ziyara and ask him to accept it. Moreover, we renew our status of disciple. Our decency and our spiritual formation in the realm of the master who is Mawlai Shah Ahmad ibn Muhammad at Tijani Sharif radiallahu ta'ala anhu Fatabarakallahu It seems that this setting is made to remind as for Zakir fa'inna zikratan fa'ul mu'minin It's the reason why you have chosen a topic First to discuss. And this theme is how to define spiritual elevation at the heart of mystical power. It looks like you can notice out of it two specific words. The first one is what is called spiritual elevation. The second one is what is called mystical power. The previous man of God, known for the degree status and grade, arm themselves with these two. Spiritual elevation and mystical power. This is why if you want to define it, there has to be a solid base. The solid base is in the dina in the Allah Islam. Because someone who is not part of Islam cannot have a spiritual elevation. I mention this because sometimes you hear it. A group of people will meditate and then declare that they have acquired spiritual elevation. But I say no. Because spiritual elevation has a connection with the soul. If the soul isn't active, you cannot interpret it. This is what the Quran said. With that being said, the soul was fashioned a certain way by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah fashioned the soul in such a way that its priority is to get closer to his creator. The nas wakes up with doubts. And tend to look for ease. But the soul's priority is to get closer to Allah. And what is called spiritual elevation has a connection with the soul. And this is how one can reach Allah's destination. The Quran has specific directives for the one on the path of Allah. The directive that we all heard and in which the Muslims have accepted is this verse. 
وما امروا الا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين ورفاء ويقيموا الصلاه ويؤتوا الزكاه وذلك الدين القيم بكاز ان الدين عند الله الاسلام the directive given to us by the quran for someone who wants to reach the destination of allah is to be part of the religion of islam and follow the conditions The first condition is to pray. No one can go to Allah without praying. If someone tells you that he can take you to Allah without you having to pray, he is deceiving you. وما امروا الا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين ونفع ويقيموا الصلاه therefore the fundamental basis for a man to build a solid pillar in order to reach the destination to Allah praying is the first condition because in salat tanha an al fakhsha wal munkar hence the first condition is to pray Once you're fulfilling your salah, the prayer should erase the bad traits from your hearts. And if you want to take the path of Allah, a clean heart has to keep you company. If the heart isn't clean, You will never go far in the path of Allah. The main thing that will delay your journey will be a lack of deeds. Because those nawafil you are accomplishing daily The deeds are transferred to the neighbor you're constantly speaking about. And yours will be empty. Eventually, your prayers, your zakat, your hajj, everything will be transferred to his account. This is why a noble senior used to remind people during assemblies that if you have thousand enemies speaking bad about you then you should know that you have the most deeds in the world this is why when you're on the path of allah completing your prayers you should clean your heart along the journey to maintain righteousness After that, now comes inna salata tanha inil fakhsha'i wal munkar wa la zikrullahi akbar and fa'lamu annahu la ilaha illa Allah The Quran says you're on the path of Allah sure but try to decipher la ilaha illa Allah in your soul and this means to understand it to understand la ilaha illa Allah Your tongue and your soul have to formulate it at the same time. This is why a person is given a limited number of the zikr. La ilaha illallah to start. Ala bi zikrillahi tatma'inu al-qulub. Zikr brings in you peace. peaceful heart this is why it is said when practicing zikr two things shouldn't bother you the first thing is a negative thought practicing zikr and thinking about something negative the elders said it must be avoided 
The second thing is your body. Meaning you cannot stay awake for three minutes and concentrate on your zikr because maybe you have drunk too much water or filled your stomach with too much food. This is why it is said, if you are planning to practice, make sure you limit your food and drink. But you see Iblis made sure to keep you busy with one. By influencing the mind of the person performing zikr, many have no solution to this problem, and some even seek help. Iblis doesn't want you to excel in the path of Allah. That's the reason he makes you think of certain things during sessions of zikr. With that being said, during those moments, your mission is to fight against him. You see, when you go to the word Ghaib, Inside the file where the selection of the Qutbu Zaman is stated, there are three phases. And all three phases are basically the same. Because each of the three depends on your nafs. Ghaib will tell you that these three things, your nafs can make you commit these errors if they want to elect you as a Qutbu Zaman. However, if your nafs pushes you to commit an error, that's your first warning. Your nafs pushes you again, that's your second warning. If your nafs pushes you again, it will be your third and last warning. Your name will be removed from the list and you will not be part of the competition. It's still not over. After telling you this, they will order the Nawamis to come and motivate you into doing the things they warned you about. You will fight against your nafs until you eventually become a Sufi. Once the nafs is powerless, they will select you. That's why the 325 Qutbu Zaman elected in Ghaib, none of them are dominated by the nafs. You see, they don't leave you alone. And the Nawamis are very powerful beings. They have access to the five senses of the human being and can control it. If they motivate you into something, and your nafs falls, it's considered a warning until they remove you from the list on the third and last warning. This is why Imam Ghazali once asked the selected souls who are destined to be Qutbu Zaman. Were they chosen before the competition? It's a question in which, if you don't understand Marifa, you cannot answer it. He asked this question because he couldn't understand how a selected soul can be removed from the list and being chosen. However, in this situation, the souls of each were analyzed to see who could handle the responsibilities of a Khutbu Zaman. That's why some were not qualified. Nonetheless, every soul had the capacity to dominate their nafs. But the trials they had to face were the Nawamis. 
This is why sometimes a person would seek prayers to counter the negative thinking during zikr. But it's normal, because for this person, his mind is his trial. He has to fight against it until his mind recommends him righteousness. This is why the elders had a remedy for it. And this remedy was to head to the hospital and visit the sick. They do this to remind themselves and fear more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If their mind pushed them into having negative thoughts again, they would go to the cemetery and visit people who were rich or famous to see if they could move. Now today, the reason why there are many failures in the domain of spiritual elevation is because technology took this from us. Before you go to the hospital, they will tell you to just click on the internet and search for sick people. If you want to go to the cemetery, they will tell you to search for the disease on the internet. Before even finishing the search, two messages from WhatsApp will appear and you will eventually forget about your priority. Unfortunately, technology took this from us. This is why very few people have their spiritual elevation granted. Because if you hold things you cannot control, it can lead you astray. There are mystics who have every technology in the world. However, they can control it. Because if they are watching TV and it's time to pray, they will stop immediately and perform Salah. It's time for the session of Wazifa. No matter how many messages they have on their phone, they will perform Wazifa. They can control the technology inside their home. However, Allah didn't grant this capacity to everyone. This is why in the domain of spiritual elevation, the person on the path of Allah seeking righteousness, the solution to his elevation was brought on the Quran. The Quran said it. The Quran said, once you fear Allah, this fear should be your guidance until you find someone worthy of a guide and look up to him. Because without this guidance, if you're walking on the path of Allah alone, you can easily turn to the wrong direction. Now if the guide is here to help you, the zikr being given to you daily is what elevates you to the hadar of Allah. This is why an intelligent senior said, whoever comes to you and say, I'm a man of God, he said, do not denigrate. Just observe his manners and see if his heart is clean. If it's not, he can never be a wali. Because before Allah turns you into a wali, he first cleans your heart so you can have a spiritual elevation.
pour nga mëna am élévation spirituelle so lolu dikul du soti so lolu dikul du soti dana am nak lu bari dan ko tudde lenn li fek du lolu one brother once found me at the shop of Sirin Ibrahim in Lewana. He said to me, I've completed my journey to the path of Allah since 2002, but I want you to pray for me because I cannot stop backbiting. I said to him, what surprises me is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allahu wal haq, wal haquhu Allah. Omar also said, qawlu al haq wal kanu murran. Hence, I know that if you speak the truth and surround yourself with truthful individuals, you won't bite bite. And bite biting is dangerous. I then asked him, how did you complete your journey? He said, I was given a limited number of Salatul Fatiha to perform. I have gone through a spiritual formation for months. However, I don't practice the Zikr anymore. I told him, once you go home, check to see if the jinns didn't sabotage your spiritual journey. Because sabotaging your journey means you were given a number of Salatul Fatiha and you decide to stop performing zikr and declare that you have reached the path of Allah. Those who reach the end of the path of Allah are more scared of the Lord than anybody. If they tell you the number of times they perform nawafil at night, you'll be surprised. Because they are following their leader, who is the Prophet This is why spiritual elevation cannot be done by a guide who doesn't have the capacity. Unfortunately, since there are many who want to give others a spiritual formation without really knowing the way, following behind these people can be costly. If someone proposes to you a spiritual formation, accept, but also observe his manners and characters. If you notice in him bad manners, you should know that he cannot train you spiritually. Because if you have bad manners, holding a rosary is not going to help you. This is why Mawlai Shah Ahmed Tijani Sharif said, Before I record the membership of a disciple, I first look at his characters. If the latter has good manners, I will then accept his membership within the tariqah. However, if he doesn't have good manners, he will not benefit from this tariqah. Because all his zikr will be transferred to the people he speak about negatively. Hence, spiritual elevation is a hard task. With that being said, there are three paths. If we don't deviate it, our journey will be certified. The first path, the Prophet brought it when he was a messenger as the Prophet of Islam. And this is to be born Muslim. It's a huge chance. Being born in a Muslim household is a huge chance. The other one is having the chance to cross paths with the holder of this holy tariqah, which was given to him in Ghayb. With the litany being, That's from the Quran. Salatul Fatiha, also from the Quran. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu tasliman. La ilaha illallah is from the Quran. As for the Johar al Kamal, the pearl of perfection, wa innaka la la quluq al azim. Allah was the first to praise the Prophet. The Prophet took this praise, transformed it until souls can hear it with the following Ayni rahmati, Ayni rabbaniyati, 
عين الياقوتة عين المتحققة بدء از صالد بيس عين المعارف الأقوى He took those who chant this praise on the path of Sirat Gattam al -Azgham. He gifted those to whom he intended to share his presence to them. Nur al -Mutalsam. And those who want to connect with him. The Prophet gave them these words. Salatan tu'arifuna biha iyahu. Meaning between you and I, there is no barrier. The reason there is no barrier is because of Salat and Tu'arifuna. It's not something you just decipher. No, it's a formula. This is why sometimes when a man of God tell you, when I met with the Prophet yesterday or with Sheikh yesterday, it makes you wonder. However, if the Wali knows the word from Jawaharatul Kamal, Salat and Tu'arifuna, because it's a formula. It's a formula. Now us we simply recite it during sessions of Lucifer. Salat and Tu'arifuna biha iya. But it's a formula. And once this formula is true to your soul, and you know it with certainty, then there will no longer be a barrier between you and the Prophet. Therefore, our chants are the three solid bases that we have and Allah has helped us with a wasila. This guide is Sheikh Tijani. About Sheikh Tijani Sharif. As I said earlier at Medina Sheikh, it happens sometimes that someone say, so and so are his disciples. Maybe they don't know him, but what I know for sure is that his status is beyond having numerous disciples, even though we mean disciples from Ghaib. I was amazed by him during the last session of Diwanul Hira. There was no consensus. When we went to Diwanul Hira on the ninth day, Every prophet and man of God suggested a formula with a divine name. Some said Allahu, La ilaha illallahu, Rahman, Qudus, Sabur, and others said the Ismulail Azam. However, there was no consensus. Shah then said, Since there is no consensus, we should ask Sidi Ahmed to suggest a formula. The Prophet ﷺ then gave out a formula. A formula of Allahu Nur Allah la ilaha illallah. Of eleven thousands. And closed with Surah Al Shamsi. Because ever since Dawda have been receiving messages. People want you to clarify the formula. And I told them that my Friday speech regarding this session was very clear. They're asking for the 11,000s. Well, it's 11,000s in Ghaib. It's different from our numbers. When you ask the aristocrats of heaven about this number, they will tell you that this number represents X number in our world. The Prophet gave out this formula at Diwan al -Hira. And yet, two months before, Sheikh Tijani Sharif told me about this formula. At the end of the session, I said to him, I am not amazed of the fact that you can enter the mind of your disciple and know what he thinks, because after all, we are your disciple. But to know and say what the Prophet will decree at Diwan al Hira, that's beyond amazing. He is, of course, the Qadmiyatul Maktoum. Barzaqul Maktoum. He is Haqiqatul Maktoum. And it's because of this Haqiqatul Maktoum that whenever the light of the Prophet sparkles, the light resonates in Sheikh Tijani. 
And if you don't know, you might ask why there was no consensus. I said it in Medina Sheikh. There are things that happened in the private lives of the Prophet and they don't want the information revealed to the eyewitness of holy history. And if they leave their intermediate spaces, to use the formula, it will have a new intermediate space. To better understand it, it's as if someone is being body scanned by the security at the airport. And maybe if you didn't attend the airport, nothing would have been detected. It's the same thing with intermediate spaces. Everything is verified. However, if you don't know about this reality, then you don't know. But Sheikh Tijani has the capacity to spiritually train his disciples until revealing them things that happened in the world Ghaib. And if a man is on a journey to the path of Allah, hidden things between Ghaib and Shahada will be revealed to his soul. When this happens to you, you don't know if it's luck, chance, or the fact that you were chosen. But you will nonetheless know in haqqul yaqeen that you are on the right path. One senior once said the following, you know if a person is trying to get closer to Allah, and then suddenly he starts being lazy in the worship, it's because Allah doesn't want to reward him in the future. Because if Allah doesn't want to reward you in the future, he will never make you work hard in his field. If that being said, if Allah doesn't want your soul to elevate in the domain of light, He will not make you understand words of light. One kind elder visited me at Medina Shah. He told me, I was speaking with one brother who always performed the zikr of Salat al-Fatiha. We were speaking about your talks and recordings. I know he doesn't want to believe because of traditions. But me, whenever I perform zikr, I play one of your talks and I tell him to listen. One day I asked him, is this man talking a good man? He said, yes, he's a good man, but he always speaks about heavens. He never discusses things regarding earth. I told him. Yet you, every day, you talk to me about your fields. It's normal because you only know about your fields. This man also is talking about places he knows. And since you don't know about heaven, you only want to discuss things related to your fields. You know when you observe the sky or heaven, you might think it's far away. But the reason why you think it's far away is due to a lack of spiritual elevation. Because if your connection with Ghaib is intense, your discussion with them will never be interrupted. But above knowing how to greet, welcome and discuss with them. The same way you greet and discuss with someone you meet, You know the Prophet on Laylatul Miraj, when he went to the Creator, he couldn't use the same greeting as us Muslims, Assalamu Alaikum, addressing to the holder of peace. It's not possible. This is why he said, Atahiyatu Lillahi, Azakiyatu Lillahi, Atayibatu Salawatu Lillah. Because he couldn't have faced Allah and say, Assalamu Alaikum. Because you cannot meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the holder of peace, and you wish him peace. Allah is the one that gives peace. When you're on the path of Allah, your soul is informed of the different ways to greet the inhabitants of Ghaib. Mm 
This is what the great elder was referring to in his story. Someone went to a man of God and said, I want you to pray for me so I can go to Mecca and then be the first one to come back that way I can share about what happened before anybody. The man of God in his prayer said, May Allah give you the right mindset and may he make you the last one to come back so that we won't be conceited or have a story to share. The person wasn't thrilled about the prayer. After he went to Mecca, he was the last one to come back. On top of that, he heard that everybody shared their story. When he arrived, he didn't have a brand new story to share, so he said the following. The Prophet only greeted me by my last name. I was the only person he greeted. The man of God then says, How did the Prophet greet you? He came to me and said, Nyang, how are you? Did you greet him back? He said, yes. I told him, Aydara, I'm doing well. Since he didn't have a story to share, he decided to make up one. However, to tell you, a lot of wisdom emanates from the teachings of the elders. And they know that when Allah wants to reward an individual, He directs the individual towards the path of righteousness. If He wants you to go astray, He leaves you alone. However, the Lord wants individuals that follow the light of the Prophet. As for what is called mystical power, many were misled by mystical power. Because most mystics are always trying to blow away people. I want to recite this to magically make birds appear in front of me. I want to recite this to transform objects. I want to recite this to walk on air. These can all be done by simply reciting a divine name. But there is something more important than surprising people with these tricks. And this is to recite what Allah has granted for you until every one of your prayers is accepted. You know a person can perform the zikr of the name of God until walking on air and still be unable to pray for people until it's accepted. The name of God you're reciting, Allah can make the rohan that emanates from the zikr lift you in the air. And if the crowd cannot see the rohan, they will say you're walking on air. When is the rohan lifting you thanks to the rings? Some mystics do so with basmala, Allahu, others who. I have met a couple of sharif outside of the tariqa tijaniya, and most of their zikr was who Allahu. Once I asked one brother at Jalafin, why don't you start practicing the zikr who Allahu 1,111 times? He told me it's because he wants to perform miracles, because in their environment, if you don't perform miracles, no one will listen to you. And where he's from, at Ganar, this is what they believe in. I told him that Basmala can also do wonders. We discussed this matter. And I let him know that if you continue this path, 
you will not pay attention to God anymore. This is why the elders will recommend disciples who would want to practice the zikr of a divine name to have the intention of worshipping Allah and include all of their prayers and needs. This is the most important part because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can grant all of your prayers in the long run. Most people with mystical powers tend to brag about it. If this mystical power requires the individual to rise and act, then this power is soft. A real holder of mystical power is someone you have never heard or seen appearing in front of you without the latter even realizing it. And nowadays, people think that anyone with mystical power is a man of God. And the martaba of wali exceeds these different terms, organizations and vision. This is why the awliya are armed themselves with spiritual elevation. With these explanations, from now on, you should be able to tell if a person performing miracle is a man of God or not a man of God. Because this is the topic, spiritual elevation at the heart of mystical power. In order to know this, you have to observe the manner of the person. A few years ago, a senior came to visit the father of Sheikh Jibril Jan in the masjid. As soon as he entered, I said to myself that this man had zikri many names of God because this can be visible in one's face. They were discussing and the senior suddenly said, if a person attempts to cause harm to me, I will react. I am not the type to forgive. If someone causes me harm, I will automatically react. If someone causes harm to me, I will automatically react. When he said the following, I said to myself that this man here will never listen to anyone. This act is very dangerous because a person sitting next to you can have a higher rank than you and this can in consequence cause harm to the person that said it. This statement is even written inside the manual in Ghaib. I once told a similar story during a Mawlid about a disciple that always brags in public that his master is above every guide. At every gathering, he said that his master is higher in ranks than other guides. One day, he attended the gathering of the Qubbu Zaman, or Pole of the Time, and said that his guide was above the Pole of the Time. The Qubbu Zaman then said, this is getting out of hand. However, what saved the disciple is that his guide also attends the Hadaratul Ilahiyah. This Qutb Zaman went to his guide and told him to educate his disciple. If you don't educate him, he will be gone in a week. The guide then said to him, I will educate him. He one day took the appearance of another person and intercepted his disciple. He said to him, Where do you come from? The disciple says, I was at the house of my guide, the master above all. His guide under another appearance says to him, Your guide doesn't know anything. The disciple talked back and the man recited, 
Ya Allah, kun fayakun. Hit the ground and fire encircled the disciple. You see this fire? If your guide is the best, he should come to your rescue. The disciple says, My guide would not let this happen. He will come and help me. The man then says, Where is he? Now is he still better than me? The disciple then says, I apologize. You're better than him. The man turned off the fire and the disciple ran to his guide's house. I thought you were above all the guides, but I was wrong. Today I met someone more powerful than you. His guide tells him, There are many guides better than me. Hence you have to be careful. What the disciple didn't know is that his guide was the one who taught him a lesson. Ghaib also reacts the same way in these types of situations. Unfortunately, in our country now, a disciple would say something bad about a qutb, and this qutb would not find this disciple's guide at the Hadratul Ilahiyah. But for the case of the disciple, his guide was a man of God, which is why the Qutb Zaman was able to communicate with him. Because for this type of scenario, the first thing a man of God would do would be to educate the disciple instill in him good and approved manners by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's very important. If you're idolizing a person, make sure to acquire some of his manners. Because if you're put on the path of spiritual formation, it's the first thing people will look at. And if you don't have the proper manners, you cannot benefit from this spiritual formation. Nevertheless, you possess the Salatul Fatiha. Hence, if you're still wondering about things revolving around spiritual formation or mysticism, it's because you don't have the power of Salatul Fatiha. Sheikh Tijani included everything inside Salatul Fatiha. The only thing a person needs to elevate is to have a proper guide. Because no one owns Hadaratul Ilahiya. And Allah can still favor thousands of thousands of Oliya. Because He is here to give people who want to get close to Him. This is why if you love the Prophet in His light, He can give you anything. Just stay on the right path and under the guidance of a proper guide. If you want to attend Hadratul Ida here, find a guide who always assists this session. Plus, the most important thing is to clean your soul until it attends every day the Hadratul Ida here. The lights passing by you 24-7. If every day the light of the Prophet is always next to you, then it's equal to attending the Hadaratul Ilahi every day. This helps the soul that aspires to be close to Allah. Getting closer to Allah is hard and easy at the same time. You have to follow the recommendations by letter and hold on to walhadi ila sirati al mustaqim to be propelled to sirati al tamil asqam. 
This is why once you have the Salat al-Fatiha, you have acquired the missing piece. What's left is to continue to strive. With that being said, practicing Zik in high numbers is good. But the most crucial part is to know the way. Once you're on the right path, be patient, because Allah is in no rush. And a person who is rushing to get close to Allah will never accomplish His will. You have to begin your spiritual formation slowly and patiently while you wait for Allah to give you favors. When Sheikh Tijani Sharif told me in 2006 about the mission and its magnitude in the future, I asked him if I can share this insight with my companions because at that time they were very few. He said, yes, you can. I said to him, can you pray for them so they won't deny this fact? Because if I tell them, I don't think they will believe me. However, when I told those words to Sayyid Muhammad al-Amin Bada and others, they believed me. This is what you call willpower. Willpower is a gift from Allah. Allah is the one that can make a person believe or disbelieve. In order for a person to have this gift, the latter has to have light. Today, this is our heritage. This is our heritage. If today we are back in this place, it's because of this heritage. When the neighbors heard of the conference, they were happy to welcome us because we grew up in this neighborhood. We performed here our Hadalat al Juma, our Wasifa, our Mawlid al Nabi in 2006 and 2007. Every day in the morning, I used to knock on this door to wake them up for Fajr. We would pray and perform Wasifa together. As for the youth of this neighborhood, they knew me very well because my house was right across the street. Sometimes on Thursdays, the youth would want me to come and be the referee for their football games. I used to accept their request. I would go to the field along with yellow cards, red cards and whistles. I don't know if it was because of how religious I was or, but whenever I sent off players, they would get off the field without protesting. There was a coach that always used to protest, and this person was Sayyid Muhammad al-Amin Bara. One day I asked, who is this person always protesting? They said he is coaching his players. To tell you, this is our neighborhood. We grew up here. And it's because of our good past that we can hold a conference in front of them. There are people who have followers. Tell them to have a conference in their neighborhood. They will not do it. There was a story of a man who was quickly appointed as Imam. 
After the appointment, someone said, you should have done a morality investigation. One senior among the crowd then says, we should consult the lady that lives here because she knows him. They asked her to come over and see if she recognizes him. When they arrived, the lady looked at him and told him to resign. And the man did so without arguing. With that being said, righteousness is important. And by the will of Allah, those who followed us from the beginning were always pious. And this is why we can still share settings with them. This is our heritage. We can give the microphone to every one of our followers and they will comment only good things. Because we have instilled in them characters and morals that even their parents can attest to it. May Allah assist everyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make everyone benefit from this light. Whether you just joined the mission or be part of the mission in the future, may everyone benefit from it. I said on my coming, I'm going to discuss about brotherhood because only good people are part of this assembly. And lately at night, Sheikh Tijan Sharif has only been showing me kind people from this Hadara. President came in and I told him about the dream that I had with him. Yesterday I dreamed of Hussein Ujjayi, something big, Tabarakallah. Somebody in the dream told me about his elevated status. That's what Sheikh Tijani has been showing me lately. The manners and the characters of people. Maybe he's about to complete the file before the lunching. I don't know. Tabarakallahu, may Allah increase you all. Deeds and lights are important. And you all know that I share everything with you. And this is also why we are here for a conference. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfill all intentions in the apparent and hidden. Our elders, may Allah grant them a long and healthy life. May Allah make it easy for the youth and grant them what's better for them. However, we credit everything and thank Mawlai Shah Ahmad Tijani Sharif. Because he is the one who gave us guidance and orientation. And it's because of him if we can have this gathering today. Those who were here yesterday evening know that the rain poured so much that the tarpaulin fell into the ground. We came here at night around 11 p.m. The workers who were supposed to fix the tarpaulin said they are going to wait until tomorrow. I then said to my companions, let's arrange their materials and give it back to them. If they sleep, Allah will not ask them about the mission. We have this task. Hence, let's remove their podium and bring our own materials. I left this place around 5 in the morning. I was helping them until 5 a.m. I told them we have a mission to carry out. We don't have time to sleep. The companions were all in it, along with Imam Sheikh Bah. 
Last night at 2 a.m., I was with Khalifa Umaru standing next to the podium. I told Dauda to call Imam Sheikhba so he could transport the materials with his SUV. He came with his car around 2 a.m. He came with his car late at night. When it was 5 a.m. in the morning, I told Imam, you should go home and rest now. He said, I want to stay until there's no more work left. And he is a senior, but he has willpower. Willpower is very important. And like I previously said, before I tell my followers to do something, they will find me doing the work first. I was present with them from 11 until 5 in the morning. This is what you call willpower. And it's all because of the mission. Mawla Ishi Ahmad Tijani and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah assist those who enter up to their sleep to be with us. We are missionaries, hence may Allah assist you in the apparent and hidden. Now our next appointment will be the night of Mawla Shah Ahmad Tijani, the symposium, the Maulid Nabi and the Wazif Zuhara. In less than 40 days we will begin the Burda. Therefore, Maulid Nabi is already here. Tabarakallahu. Major events await us. The night of Sheikh Tijani Sharif, the symposium, the Maulid Nabi, and the Wazif Zuhr. I pray for the youth. I thank Sheikh Muhammad Al Amin Bara, the president of Darit Al Iman St. Louis. I thank the whole neighborhood because everybody welcomed us. They all opened their doors. We also thank them. With that being said, let's recite Fatiha, Salatul Fatiha, include our needs in the blessing of the Prophet Sallallahu and Mawla Shah Ahmad Tijani. Bismillah.
الشيخ والخاتم لما سبق ناصر العبد بالحق ومن الى صراطك المستقيم وعلى اله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين Allah has told us about this mission at the end of time.